Good morning, traders and investors. My name is Roger Scott, and I'm the senior strategist for Wealth Press. Today is Thursday. It's November 17th, and it's chilly out here. It's like 48 degrees in Jacksonville, Florida. What the hell is going on here? I'm used to a tropical climate. I protest. <laughs> Folks, I want to thank each and every one of you for liking these videos, subscribing to these videos on YouTube. Now, here's the thing post feedback and comments and questions. When you ask a question, other people have a question and I post the answer in this video. So please, please, please respond and uh, ask me questions and I will respond. And if you don't know where to find us, go to YouTube and go to the Wealth Press channel and like our channel, please, please, please. Now let's get into today's analysis. Now today's session should be called, I hate to say I told you so, but I told you so. Markets got really excited. The PPI was solid, the CPI was solid, everybody thought that's it. What I love about market participants, and please, I don't mean to signal anyone out, but I love the, mar the fact that people in this market have very little short-term memory. It's like we can turn bull, bear in like one day. It's amazing, really, how fast the market can turn on a dime. It, it has no loyalty to its current position, I'll tell you that right now. The Dow's opening a down 336 points. The NASDAQ is down about 150 points. This is definitely beyond random. Uh, when I showed everybody uh, an example of the Dow the other day, I showed and explained how the Dow right now is trading above the 200-day moving average, and it shouldn't be, and it's starting to curl. And let me just go here. And this, to me, looks like it's going to erase a lot of the of this upside that it, that it did. It went from... 29,000 to 33,000, I think we're gonna land somewhere around 30,000 if we're lucky. Um, and if you look at the SPY, which tracks the S&P 500, you will see that, let me just change this here. You will see that we didn't even go to the 200-day moving average. We bounced off the 200-day moving average and the next stop is the 50-day line. And the QQQ, we barely even got off the ground. I mean, look at that. So the Dow really ran ahead of itself. I guess I guess I, I guess investors and, and funds thought that one report or two reports is going to change everything. It doesn't work that way, folks. It doesn't work that way. Now let's talk a little bit about briefing and let's talk about what's on the table. And I'll get into the nitty gritty and all the details. So U.S. benchmark finished the regular session in the red, pressured by Micron chip stocks, fuel drop in tech, and substantial loss in retail after Target said. Just better than anticipated retail data renewed fears of more aggressive Federal Reserve monetary policy. They just keep reminding us that things are going to take a while to get better and they're not going to back away from this aggressive rate hike uh, environment we're in. Oil and gas technology and basic materials were the biggest losers. Commerce, Repo Commerce Department reported that retail sales advanced 1.3%. That's a good report, but underlying stocks like Target and also Best Buy, uh, something that people didn't talk about, but Best Buy is the second tech company, not tech company, tech retailer in the country behind Target, and it did not do well at all. So even though we had really good data for retail sales, the numbers just didn't, um, the forward-looking statements just didn't look all that peachy. Goldman Sachs, for example, said it was adding another 25 basis point increase by the Federal Reserve to its 2023 outlook and boosted its projection for the peak Fed fund to be at five, five to 25. That's higher than we're at right now by a good percentage. And we still have an 85% chance that the Fed will raise rates by half a basis point instead of three quarters, which is only 14.6%. Remember before the CPI, it was like 45, 55, and now it's 85, 15. We'll see if any news or Fed data will be able to back that in. I don't think it will. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at U.S. building permits. They're looking at 1.5 million compared to 1.564, so slightly lower, and I think the number will be slightly lower. Real estate just hasn't been doing as great with rates going up so fast. It takes a little while for the public to get uh, mentally accustomed to these numbers. Philadelphia Manufacturing Index is coming out was at 8.6 in October. We're looking at 6.2. It'll be very interesting. And then we've got housing starts data, as I mentioned earlier. That's aside from the building permits, we're looking at 1.410. And economists are comparing it to 1.439. Jobless claims are coming out. I don't think that's going to be a big deal. The number has been uh, very much in line with about 200, 225,000. So as long as it's within the moving average, it's all good. 
global markets are going to be looking at for UK Chancellor Autumn, who will be talking about hefty tax increases and spending cuts on the agenda as the government tries to plug a significant black hole. When I say significant, oh boy. Shanghai, China, oof, I feel bad for these people. I mean, the, the, the COVID outbreaks are just, they're just not having a break. Close lower as losses in tech stocks dragged Asian markets lower. In addition, concerns over more aggressive moves by the Federal Reserve and rising COVID cases in China also weighted on sentiment. It's like we're re reading a report from two years ago, right? Especially as the country notched at the highest daily rise in COVID cases since mid-April. We got to watch out for that. Thankfully, it doesn't seem to be a different variable or a variant, which is very good for us right now. Uh, Japan's Nikkei inc uh, index closed lower. New data showed Japan's trade deficit widened. So, folks, things are just not looking all that great. Um, and forward-looking statements from company are not looking great either. Cisco reported earnings. Uh, this, the company did better than expected. They were expecting $0.84 cents a share on $13.3 uh, billion in revenue. They got $0.86 cents instead of $0.84. Cents. And this is beaten down numbers. And Cisco can barely get it above. I mean, that, that's really, really bad. Shares are up a little bit. And they made $13.63 billion instead of $13.3 billion. So they, they outperformed, as I expected, by a little bit. Now, th f folks, before you think it's safe to enter the water, think about all the stocks that are reporting today. And their and they're forward-looking statements to the public we got baba chinese company another chip stock a big chip stock one of the top five um you've got gap retailer another retailer another retailer network another retailer it's going to be big big retailers and folks retailers are not happy right now uh, so you got to be really 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 careful of this market now i'm going to show you the vix the vix it measures volatility as you can see here it looks like we bottomed out around 22 and it looks like we're starting to go higher again. Now, here's what you need to know. And this is real danger zone here. And it's good that we're looking at it right now. The put the call ratio is at 125. What's interesting is not the fact that it's just at 125, which, mean, which means the market is, is, uh, is, is, is getting really, really up there. But, but, but what, this means is, what this means is the market went from being oversold, too many, too many put buyers, too many call buyers back to too many put buyers so right now the market is setting itself up for more downside this this is right here is an oversold market but i'm telling you right now that when it fluctuates from from this level all the way to this level it typically means there's another peak to go so i'm expecting this to rise again today in the next couple of sessions not expecting a very bullish sentiment but i find it very interesting that we went from the highest put level to the highest call level since uh march and then look at how it went right back up that's what i'm expecting i'm expecting this to go higher and for the market to cool off now if you look at the sectors and this is the other thing i've been talking about look at industrial 89 percent, 69 percent. look at information technology there's a lot of gaps here 85 percent trading above 50-day moving average only 46 percent trading above the 200-day moving average that's a huge, huge vulnerability. Real estate, 68% to 16%. Communication services, 60 to 28. Utilities, 63 to 27. That's bad. And when you look at these individually outside of energy, which has 96 versus... See, you want the 200 to be stronger or as strong as the 50-day. If the 50-day is stronger than the 200-day, that means emotions are running wild. This is the foundation and this is emotion. So when you have 81% of the S&P trading above the 50-day line, but only 51% trading above the 200-day moving average, that's not happiness. And look like, look, look at basic materials, for example. 46% of stocks are trading above the 200-day moving average. 89 are trading above the 50-day. Look at where this puts us. Let me show you this. You got to see this with your eyes. Look at the 20 years of data. Look at where we're at. So there's very, very, very little upside potential for the market right now in terms of broad exposure. And I mean, look at technology, look at Infotech, 42% versus 85. Look at where we're at right now. There's just not much upside. And then when you look at the Dow Jones and you see it breaking down the way we're seeing it right now, and it's down already about a point, 
it looks like we're going to hit the 200 day moving average uh sooner than later everything is pointing to pullbacks now sectors i want to talk about individual sectors because today is thursday and on thursday i give you top etf and top option pick so right now right now we're looking at sectors now i'll give you the top one but i want to tell you guys something interesting you don't want to trade single sectors there's a better way i have a program called alpha rotation and i'll talk about it in a minute but we put clusters together we put the best so so here's the thing here's the best etf the best sector and here's the worst sector right why do you need to have all this crap in between for what why not sell the, the why not sell the weakest or buy a put in the weakest and buy a call in the strongest maybe buy a call in the strongest two maybe buy puts in the weakest two or maybe buy a call in the strongest one and buy puts in the three weakest ones or buy three calls in the most defensive sectors and so the point is you're trading more you're trading smarter because you're giving your you're you're using the strongest sectors in the market to leverage strength and you're using the weakest sector in the market to buy puts so you're always going with the most strength and you're going with the most weakness and you're leaving all this crap in between so right now for example i really like the energy sector i really love the energy sector and uh if i was to recommend an etf i would be recommending let me just take you to the charts i would be recommending the etf energy but there's another ETF that I'm really, really liking right now, and that's the utility sector, okay? So I would actually recommend energy and utilities for you right now, and I think utilities actually have more upside potential than energies, and also I think consumer staples have a lot of potential. So I would be going energy and consumer staples right now. Matter of fact, I personally like consumer staples, and I'm going to give you I'm going to give you an option for the consumer staples. It's at the 200 day moving average. Um, I don't think it's overbought. And I think we're going to see more upside from consumer stocks, especially defensive consumer stocks, because we have an ascending triangle. And because this, this sector has not been running out wild. And when we get defensive, we go into inflationary environment, people back off on everything, but they're still going to be eating rice, beans, soups, and all that other stuff. If you look at the profile of this sector, you will see, look at the constituents, look at the type of stocks we have. Pepsi, Costco, Walmart, Philip Morris, General Mills, uh, Je um, Tyson Foods, things people need, not people things people want. People are still gonna be uh, washing clothes. People are still gonna be eating cereal, no matter where the, where the market is. People are not gonna be giving up on, ce on uh, cigarettes. So I like this sector quite a bit. And if I was to look at the options right now, I would be looking at, I would be looking at right now, yeah, you, I would go to, let's see, March, March. Yeah, go to March, gets plenty of time. These are not expensive options. You can buy an add the money call right now for like $3, okay? I mean, look at this. There's, there's the 75 has good liquidity open interest right here. There's plenty of open interest, look plenty of open interest so just wait for the spread to tighten or or work the order and as you get closer to expiration these options will get tighter um, and if you don't want to go that far go to january we still have plenty of time left you can go to 74 75 they've got plenty of open interest plenty of liquidity you'll get the 74 for around 210 75 for around 160 and you may want to wait till the end of today the market looks like it's softening a little bit but i really really like these now don't don't hold options that have less than 20, 30 days till expiration usually because they will decay. But I like the consumer this uh, consumer staple sector. But here's the cool part. Here's the cool part. When I put these sectors together, I look at the top three sectors or the top two sectors and the two bottom sectors, and I leave out all that stuff in between that isn't moving. So it's very, very important because it gives you the position to hold on to stocks that are going down because if it's going down you have puts right so you have a hedge if they're going up you have a call and you can position yourself to only have the best of the best like right now why would you want to have the communication services it looks like it's about it topped out and it looks like it's about to go down again or consumer discretionary it looks like it's about to make another leg down you want to sell these so we would buy puts and consumer discretionary and puts an xlc and calls probably in the energy 
and uh, in the industrial or the consumer staples or the utilities. But my point is, you always want to be in these clusters. That's what I call clusters. And these clusters are critical. Like folks, hedging in this type of environment environment is critical. Now we've seen it over and over this year. Bad earnings surprises, an unexpected move by the Fed, a surprise CPI reading, and the markets can switch instantly, right? Well, you wanna be protected. That's where a hedge can help and give you peace of mind. Like for example, during COVID, we were short energy. Energy was really taking off. We made 64% one rotation, 80% one rotation. It's all because we trade these clusters. Now, I've put together an in-depth training course, literally an in-depth training course to break down my favorite hedging trading strategies, how I trade these clusters, how I pair four ETFs together, why I pair these four ETFs together. It's called Alpha Rotation. Check this free class out. It's very, very cool. You will love it. We also show you how we have bonus top stocks and our win rate has been like 92% this year. I think you're gonna love this. You're gonna learn about clusters, top sector, bottom sector, how to combine these 11 ETFs together. It'll help you simplify your trading. It'll help you gain an edge in this crazy market. Watch out for the Dow. It looks like we're turning south. I'll talk to you later and make sure to like and subscribe to this video in our YouTube channel. Bye guys, have a great, great day and keep safe out there and be protected with a good hedge. Bye.